Hello, welcome to another episode of Stories of World War II Veterans. My name is Kayleen Reeser, and each week I'm privileged to bring you a story from one of the men and women that I have interviewed from my, from, from my books. This is book two in my World War II Legacies series, They Did It for Honor, Stories of American World War II Veterans. I have interviewed 260 World War II veterans, and of course, most of them are gone at this point. So this is my tribute to the military, is writing these books and sharing their stories. Thanks to all of the military personnel watching. We really appreciate your service. Bob Pyle. If not for American President Harry Truman ordering the drop of the A-bomb on the city of Hiroshima, I would not have made it home said Bob Pyle of Bern, Indiana. He had barely graduated from Geneva High School in 1944 before being drafted in the Army's infantry. Following eight weeks of basic training at Camp Robinson in Arkansas, Pyle was assigned to the 25th Division, 35th Regiment, 2nd Battalion, G Company, serving in the Philippines. He was shipped first to New Guinea, then Manila. The capital city of the Philippines had already been liberated, but fighting continued in the hills around Luzon. The American military stated that only soldiers, 19 and older, could fight on the front line of battle. Lucky for me, I had turned 19 five days earlier, said Pyle with a smile. He carried an M1 rifle, machine gun, ammunition, and a shovel. His helmet served as a pillow. For two months, we lived in foxholes, he said. The holes measured six feet by three feet by two feet. We piled up dirt around the edges so we would not have to dig so deep, he said. We also tried to make the foxholes sloped so if a grenade was tossed in, it would roll away from us. Yet, even foxholes were not foolproof. Pyle witnessed one American soldier who received shrapnel wounds from enemy fire after sticking his head over the edge. The injured soldier was treated by military medics. The soldiers endured further rough living conditions while engaged in battle. We had no baths or shaves for months, he said. Once a week we changed socks. Our meals consisted of cold sea rations, which were cigarettes, coffee, but no water, and chocolate. The soldiers ingested halogen pills to keep them from getting sick from drinking the water in the, in the Philippines. Once Pyle filled his canteen with water at a stream. He noticed the water had turned red. The two dead bodies lay upstream, he said. Their blood had turned the water. Sleep was nearly a non-entity as the Japanese often attacked at night. We lay in our holes and shot them at, in the dark, he said. In the morning, we'd check for bodies around us. The Allies also strung grenades with tripwires among the trees around their encampments to protect themselves from invaders. During raids, soldiers sometimes misplaced their weaponry. One night, an American soldier found three Japanese soldiers who wanted to surrender. The G.I. had lost most of his weapons and took them in with only a bolo knife, said Pyle. A bolo is a large cutting tool of Filipino origin, similar to a machete. It was not always the enemy the soldiers discovered amongst them. Once someone detected movement and yelled, Movement to the right flank! The culprit turned out to be an albino possum. After three months on the front line, Pyle was transferred to Osaka, Japan, and was there when that country's military forces surrendered. Pyle remained in Japan during the period of occupation. He was transferred to a military police platoon and had the opportunity to see General Dwight D. Eisenhower in a parade and General Douglas MacArthur on a street in Manila. They were good leaders, he said. Pyle was later assigned to drive a military truck. With conditions slightly relaxed, his company gave aid to an orphan boy around eight years of age, who lingered around the soldiers. We fed and clothed him, and he rode in my truck with me, said Pyle. Upon contracting malaria, 
Pyle was forced to take quinine tablets to get rid of the aches he felt throughout his body. He was finally admitted to a hospital. During his time there, Pyle traded his gold watch for a GI watch issued to soldiers. Mine gave the exact time, so an orderly used it to check pulses, he said. He also paid a Filipino native to draw his portrait, a, sur a souvenir which he still possesses. After being discharged in November of 1946, Pyle returned to Bern, Indiana, where he married. He and his wife, Frida, became parents to four children. For many years, he kept in contact with buddies from the war. Today, the war is still something difficult for him to think about. I was glad to serve my country, but I would not want to do it again, he said. I saw things I didn't like, but that's the way it was. I have tried to block out the bad. Now here's a picture of Bob Pyle, who we've just been hearing about. So I want to thank you for listening. Again, this is a story from book two in my World War II Legacy series, They Did It for Honor, Stories of American World War II Veterans. My name is Kayleen Reeser, and I thank you for listening. Please subscribe and tell others to listen as well. And I'll see you next week.